Hi, and welcome to the weekly wrap up for this Friday, July 26, 2024. Thanks for being here and tuning in. We appreciate it. We have a lot to cover, so let's dive right in. This week's shows were very light. We had Lynette Zhang joining us for all financial matters, including geopolitical, both here in the US and abroad. And she gave some of her insights on a lot of the currencies and cryptos that many of you are very interested and engaged. Uh, next week, we don't have any shows as we're ending the month of July, preparing for August and the remainder of the summer. So here goes the headline news. 6,855 flights canceled on Friday following the global IT outage. Thousands of American flights continue to be either canceled or delayed in the wake of last week's global IT outage. As of noon Sunday, there were over 1,200 flights canceled and more than 4,600 delays, according to flight tracking website FlightAware, most of them stemming from Delta and United. After a difficult financial year, Spirit Airlines is making cuts in staff in an effort to save money and avoid more drastic measures. Starting September 1st, around 260 pilots will be temporarily displaced. A former Vietnamese property and aviation tycoon is charged with $146 million in fraud and stock market manipulation. They went on trial in Hanoi on Monday in the latest corruption case targeting the communist country's business elite. Trin Van Quet, who owned the FLC empire of luxury resorts, golf courses, and budget bamboo airways, has nearly $2 billion in stock market wealth before his arrest, according to state media estimates. Taiwan's military on Monday launched a 2024 edition of its annual Han Kuang series of war games aimed, designed specifically at resisting an invasion from an increasingly aggressive China. Chinese President Xi Jinping has stressed that eventual unification with Taiwan is inevitable, though force if necessary. Chinese forces encircled Taiwan with major air, ground, and sea based drills in May after the inauguration of Taiwanese President Lei Ching Te a critic of Beijing who emphasized Taiwan's sovereignty is an inaugural speech. The BBC is set to act a further 500 roles from its public service division in attempts to save another 200 million euro as part of a reshaping of the BBC for the future. The corporation revealed today that the move will kick off a voluntary redundancy process for job cuts, which comes at the top of a previous 2000 drop in roles over the last five years. Bankruptcy filings by commercial entities grew more than a third this year as businesses struggled under an environment of high costs and interest rates, according to the American Bankruptcy Institute. A total of 3,016 commercial Chapter 11 bankruptcies were filed in January through June of this year. That's up 34% from last year, said a July 3rd ABI press release. Small business filings rose by 61%. Total bankruptcy filings rose by 15%, with individual filings increasing by another 15%. Mexican drug kingpin Eshmael El Mayo Zambada, the co-founder of the notorious Sinaloa drug cartel, is in U.S. custody, two sources familiar with the operation told Reuters on Thursday. Zambada joined and founded the Sinaloa cartel along with a now-jailed drug lord, Joaquin El Chapo Guzman, as he faces a litany of indictments for crimes related to drug, tra drug trafficking and organized crime within the United States. The media has dubbed it a beer, uh, excuse me, the media has dubbed it a beer apocalypse, but it really goes beyond just beer. A number of well-known and lesser known beverage brand breweries, coffee companies and cafes have filed for chapter 11 bankruptcy. As you know, beer has been the focus of coverage because some big names have fallen. Anchor Brewing, a huge name in the craft beer industry with a national footprint, was one of the first beer brands to file Chapter 11 bankruptcy and then go summarily out of business. This year's string of restaurant bankruptcies isn't over quite yet, unfortunately. After 40 years in business, an iconic fine dining institution is facing bankruptcy as it looks to reorganize its hundreds and thousands of dollars in debt. Gotham Restaurants, LLC, the parent company of the iconic New York City eatery Gotham Restaurant is filed for bankruptcy on July 24th. The filing revealed that the company is nearly 484,000 in debt to New York State Department of Taxation Finance Bankruptcy Special Procedure Section. Nation's Restaurant News reported the company has racked up an additional debt with credit card utility companies and some of its food suppliers, including nearly 84,000 owed to Baldor Specialty Foods and nearly $97,000 to Dairyland. 
Now here are the updates on precious metals and crude oil. As of this broadcast, gold is at $2,371.20. Silver is at $28.17. Brent crude holding at $82.61. Here are the notable deaths and resignations for the week. The leader of Gloucester County Council has announced he is standing down after 14 years. Conservative Mark Hawthorne announced on Wednesday he would no longer hold the job as Shire Hall after town uh, council meeting in September. The Quidegley Division Councilor highlighted the Javelin Park incinerator and securing the A14, 417, excuse me, missing link as his proudest achievements as he was elected to the council to represent Moreland in 2009. Sony Pictures Entertainment has elevated Drew Shear to the role of Chief Financial Officer with current CFO Philip Rowley to step down after eight years. A Lincolnshire MP has ruled herself out of the running to become the next leader of the Conservative Party. Victoria Atkins, who represents Louth and Horncastle, revealed her decision on social media. She was the first elected as an MP in 2015 and is the Shadow Secretary for Health and Social Care. Democratic Senator of New Jersey Robert Menendez will finally resign next month after he was found guilty on all 16 counts in a federal bribery and corruption trial. The New Jersey Senator officially informed Governor Phil Murphy of his decision in a letter Tuesday, quote, this is to advise you that I will be resigning from my office as the U.S. Senator for New Jersey, effective as the close of business August 20th, 2024, Menendez said in a letter, a copy of which was obtained by NBC News. Former BBC Northwest Tonight presenter Bessie Barr has died after receiving an incurable cancer diagnosis last year. The mother of one from Lancaster joined BBC as a presenter and reporter in 2013 after a stint in financial journalism at CNBC in London. But in 2019, after a two decade long career in journalism, she announced she was leaving the industry to become a firefighter and join Lancashire Fire and Rescue Service. At least 146 killed in mudslides in southern Ethiopia. The death toll rose from 55 to 146 on Monday and Tuesday as search operations continue in the area. Lewis H. Latham, the innovative editor who revived Harper's Magazine and penned books and essays that skewered the American upper class from which he sprang, died on July 23rd in Rome. He was 89. Rachel Manaya, the wife of current New York Yankees executive and former New York Mets general manager Omar Manaya, was reportedly found dead in New Jersey on her home on Saturday. Death by suicide was ruled out as a cause of death by the New York Post reported Sunday night, citing a person who was briefed by the Manaya family. The baseball executive was not at home at the time of his wife's death. Crouching Tiger Hidden Dragon star Chang Pei Pei dead at 78. Russian influencer Tatiana Asolina, popularly known as Moto Tanya, has died in a motorcycle accident in Turkey at the age of 38. Asolina was famous for traveling around the world in her motorcycle, reportedly was riding near Milas in Amugla province when she lost control of a red BMW motorbike and collided with a truck. Former College of the Canyons and California Institute of the Arts photographer, Professor Daryl Waters died July 4th after a battle with cancer. He was 56. Originally from Texas, Walter spent 20 years in the photography department at COC and 26 years teaching photography at CalArts. He retired from CalArts in 2021 before moving back to his home state. Early Wednesday afternoon, the Charlotte Hornets sadly reported the passing of PA announcer Pat Daughtry, known by Hornets fans as, quote, Big Pat. Grambling State University Athletics announced the passing of former women's basketball star Jasmine Boyd on Saturday. Boyd, who played point guard for the Lady Tigers from 2015 to 2019, passed away on the night of Friday, July 19th, as reported by the local Louisiana affiliate KNOE. Renaud White, who was widely considered to be the first Black American male supermodel and for whom nearly half a century was an image of American style, walking the runways for Bill Blass, Ralph Lauren, Calvin Klein, Jeffrey Banks, and Donna Karen, has died on June 26th in Manhattan. He was 80. Dominic DeMeo, artist of Chicago's monster roster with a cult following, dies at 97. Duke Fakir, the stylish and genteel singer who nurtured the Four Tops legacy for seven decades, has died at his home in Detroit on Monday morning from heart failure. He was 88. 
Funeral services will be held Saturday for one of four black girls who helped integrate New Orleans public schools in 1960. Tessie Provost Williams, known as one of the New Orleans four, died July 6, following a series of medical complications. She was 69. At least 11 people have been killed and dozen more missing after a bridge partially collapsed in Northwest China. Several vehicles plunged into the water below when the bridge in Shangluo City, Shanxi province crumbled at around 8.40 p.m. Friday night, according to state media. It comes after storms and heavy flooding in the area. Singer, songwriter, and playwright Kim Ming Ki, who was Hank on Theater on Seoul's Dehango Theater Street, died on Sunday. Kim was 73. He was diagnosed with stomach, stomach cancer last year, battling the illness prior to passing away. The devastating plane crash at Kathmandu's Trebuvan International Airport in Nepal has resulted in the deaths of 18 people. The aircraft, a Sayurwas Airlines CRJ-200, was attempting to take off for Prakara when it veered off in the runway. It crashed into an embankment and caught fire shortly after takeoff. Valentino Bondarenko, a top Russian economist, has died at the age of 82 after falling out of her apartment window in Moscow, Russian state-run media reported on Tuesday. 16 and pregnant alum Autumn Crittenden dead at 27. A martial arts loving teenager has died after falling severely ill with an infection. Ray Williams, 18 from Bristol, traveled to Thailand for his first trip abroad to train in martial arts when he contacted a skin infection called Staphylococcus. He was treated with tablets and was on his way back to the UK when he collapsed, was put into intensive care in Malaysia, whereby he died on Wednesday. Martin S. Induk, a diplomat, historian, and educator who helped steer Middle East policy under two presidents, advocated a, a two-state solution to the Israeli-Palestinian conflict and served as a director of multiple think tanks. He died on July 25th at his home in New Fairfield, Connecticut. He was 73. And that wraps up the news. And now we can go into our commentary, which is pretty succinct this week. This week, I want to pay tribute to a dear friend and brother who left us a year ago. Darren Miata, as many of you know, as Mr. Trumptastic, was a good friend of mine and a good friend of many of us, and we miss him dearly, uh, but he lives forever in our hearts. And I was, was thrilled and honored to have a three plus year friendship with him, whereby we shared not just politics, but ideas, concepts, understanding, but a true brotherhood and a friendship was formed. And I was able to talk to him about the Lord as well. Knowing where he is in heaven is one of my greatest uh, consolations of his passing. I'm still in touch with his family and still making sure uh, to check on them periodically and do whatever is necessary to help them in their grieving and transitional process. But we all miss him and we're working diligently to continue and complete the work that he was undergoing during his time on earth. And then of course, lastly, uh, this is just a checklist reminder. Are you prepared? Do you have every item on your checklist completed? Do you have updated batteries? Have you checked your flashlights? Fresh water, fresh food, fresh gas, because gas does go down, as you know, after about three or six months. Uh, do you, have you checked your chargers? Do you have water filters, air filters for your car, car parts, uh, medicines, pet medicines, pet food? Um, have you made a list of all the phone numbers that you would normally call on a regular day-to-day, week-to-week? Have them handwritten down. That's a very simple but important tip to use should the grid go down and your phone is not working as customary, which we anticipate for a very short period of time. Uh, make sure that you check and recheck your list. Even if you think you've done it, there's always something that we can do to improve. This is all about the preparation, not fear, but preparation and anticipation process of what we've all been waiting for a long time. I think we all know that we're now coming into that inevitability moment. That does it for this week's wrap up. Thanks for listening. We appreciate your support. As always, if anything breaks like it did last weekend, we'll be sure to let you know. Otherwise, we will see you next week. Take care and God bless.